Hey guys, today's video is going to be focusing on high style armor, where to get them, how to farm them efficiently, and how to use them in builds. High style armor is very important in the scheme because it is the center point of every Destiny build. If you want to throw a ton of nades with your build, you get 100 discipline, you can throw a lot more. If you want to survive with your build, you get 100 resilience, it gives you 30% damage resist. If you want to throw more supers, you get 100 intellect, and so on and so forth. High stat armor is very easy to obtain in this game. There are other ways to get it to get like a little bit better armor, but you don't have to do it. It is very, very simple, and I will get to that later in this video. But before you do anything on farming armor or do anything, make sure you head over to your ghost and have an armor mod equipped. Armor mods just guarantee that there are 10 stats of any point that you would like in your build. So if you want 10 recovery, you can select the recovery armor. Or if you want 10 intellect, you select the intellect armor. These just are very, very helpful, and I recommend everyone have these on their build. Now, I'm going to take a second here to explain how armor distribution works and how the stats like separate. If you already know how this works, I'll have timestamps down below. You can just skip this part. But basically, armor stats distribute pretty evenly between two different groups. The first group being mobility, resilience, recovery, and the second group being discipline, intellect, strength. They will split basically 50-50 from the base value onto those stats. So if you think about the base value of this armor piece being 63, 25 of that went to resilience, 2 went to mobility, 2 went to recovery. So that's 29 in total. And the bottom half has 30 in discipline, 2 in intellect, 2 in strength. So that's 34. It, it is a little bit of a difference still, but it is basically split 50-50 between the armor pieces. If I hover over my other pieces, you can basically see that. This has a resilience mod in it, so take away 10 strength or resilience, and then you have a basically even distribution. This one has a recovery mod in it, so it's the same thing, and so on and so forth. This has a recovery mod as well, the same thing. It'll split between those two groups pretty much evenly. It won't be 100% 50-50 every time, but it, it's pretty even between them. I'd say like a 45 to 55% ratio is like the max it can range. That is basically how stats work. If that's a little confusing, uh, ask down in the comments. I'll try to explain it a little bit better down there, but that, that's all I got right now. Our first method and the easiest method to earn high stat armor is by going to the helm and visiting the seasonal vendors. Whether it's season 20, 21, or 22, it doesn't matter. You just need to go and head over and grab the old artifacts from them. So the season 20 and 21 artifacts will be legacy artifacts. Pick them up because they give you a chance to get engrams after strikes, crucible, gambit, it doesn't hurt to pick these up because they are just free engrams from completing activities. They are a chance, so don't expect them every time, but they do pop up pretty often and you do stack up engrams pretty fast. These do get improved if you did do the past seasons because of upgrades such as Season of the Deep's Deep Attraction, which will give you an additional deep engram. It is a chance, so don't expect two every time, but you can get two from different activities for doing basically nothing and just playing the game. Season of Defiance also had the same upgrade, which is this one right here, giving you an extra uh, Defiant Engram every time you get one, you'll get a second one from completing non-Battleground activities. Very, very helpful upgrades. If you don't have them, I would recommend going to get them, especially if you don't have high stat armor, but if you did have high stat armor, I would assume you wouldn't be watching this video. These upgrades are very helpful because they help you stack engrams very fast, and these engrams can then be decoded into armor pieces, whether it's a specific armor pieces or you just want to spam armor in general. Be wary of spamming armor though because you might not get what you want and you could also get class items. So I would recommend just buying the piece that you want. So like I say, I want a helmet, I'll just buy the helmet. And it's not the best roll, but that's a pretty good roll. I do this all the time with, like when I stack up war table engrams, you can also do this with keep and witch engrams. Just Turn them into armor, you'll get high stat. Do we run over to my vault real fast? We can see that I have a ton stacked up in here. I delete all the bad ones, so it's not as many as you think, but I do it on Hunter, Titan, and Warlock. I, my Titan's armor set is basically all War Table armor sets. So, like, it, it, I use this myself, and I have Farm Master Dungeons for Artifice Armor in the past. These armor pieces aren't going to be the greatest ever, but it is just a free source of high stat armor if you choose to do so. Another easy way to get high statted armor is just by doing raids and dungeons as they provide pretty decent armor just off of drops alone. And they are dungeons specifically are very, very easy to farm. So Pit of Heresy is this week's dungeon. If you watch this video before the 12th of September, you can farm Pit pretty easily. The boss is easily one phaseable and drops armor a majority of the time. A very, very good boss to farm for high statted armor. 
as well as raids. Deepstone Crip is the raid this week as well. And if you farm Deepstone Crip and you farm Tanix, this one isn't as good of a method in my opinion because it'll prioritize red border weapons if you do not have everything crafted. But it is still armor drops that will be helpful if you do farm Tanix because it is a very, very fast farm. It takes like a minute or two just to farm it and you can get a lot of drops if you need the weapons and you need like bequests people are freaking out about because of Crota's End. If you need stuff like that, then go ahead and farm Deepstone because the armor drops are also good there too. A little bit of a harder way to get high stat armor, but it is more efficient and it will get you the armor faster, is by doing master version of raids. So whether it's Vault of Glass, King's Fall, Root of Nightmares, or Vow of the Disciple, if it has a master version of the raid, which is only available when it is the pinnacle of the week and farmable, if it is the master version of a raid, it will have a modifier that says that it increases the drops for armor specifically, as well as armor stats specifically. So the modifier could say it increases recovery armor. Armor will drop more often in that raid in the master version, as well as dropping with like 10 like recovery base. So that on top of your uh, ghost mod makes it so you can farm armor that you want really, really easily. Just pay attention to modifiers on master raids, and if it has something you want, go ahead and farm it. It is more of a difficult ask, especially if you have to do it with LFG, but it is still a source to farm armor if you need be. Armor that I haven't brought up in this video yet is Artifice Armor. Artifice Armor is a very helpful piece of armor that only comes from Master Dungeons, but essentially this piece of armor just gives you three free stats in whatever stat you would like of your choosing. So this gives me plus three recovery for absolutely free. It just is an extra mod slot that is very helpful. It doesn't take any energy. It's like just super nice to have on your build. If you don't feel comfortable doing Master Dungeons as they are a pretty difficult piece of content in the game, I would recommend just trying to get a class item at the very least because it is three free stats on your class item. It, it's Class items are just basically a piece of armor that is useless on the build. It's just there to be there. So having an extra plus three stats from the armor piece is very, very nice. As you can see, I have extra discipline to top off my discipline at 100. If I didn't have this piece of armor, I wouldn't be able to get to 100 discipline and it is very, very nice. So I would recommend getting at least a class item on every character if you do not want to farm a normal armor. But if you do get the chance, farm it out. I do recommend it. As I mentioned a little bit ago, Artifice Armor only comes from Master Dungeons, which aren't always around all the time. There is the one that came around this season that does have a Master difficulty, or last season. Ghost of the Deep came out last season, so it has a Master difficulty at all times. If you farm the Master difficulty of these dungeons, it will give you Artifice Armor. I don't know how like good Ghost of the Deep Armor is because I don't really want to farm it on Master. It's not the most fun dungeon. I would personally wait around for a different dungeon to come up. Currently this week, Pit of Heresy is a dungeon as I previously mentioned. It does not have a master, so you cannot get Artifice Armor from it. But if something like Duality comes around with the master difficulty, it is a pretty easy farm, as well as like Grasp and other stuff like that. So I would recommend getting on top of master dungeons and paying attention to what the rotator looks like when you want to like farm armor. It's very helpful. I recommend getting Artifice Armor once again. The last piece of armor that we have to talk about how to farm is Exotic Armor. Exotic armor is really simple to farm, and I'm sure everyone knows the two methods, maybe even three if you want to count the Vex incursions on Yomuna. But there are two main ways to get exotic armor and farm it, and that would be one, doing the Legend Lost Sector every day. It changes every day. You can do Legend R Master to improve your chances. But I don't really do this personally because, say, example for arms that are today, there are like 14 different pairs of arms for like both are all three warlock titan and hunter so it is very hard to get the piece of armor you are gunning for and i feel like legend lost sectors aren't the like place i want to spend my time in you know what i mean i will do it for sometimes or sometimes if i have like a really bad piece of armor like i think my moth keepers are pretty bad i mean they're doable but i think i want a new pair so i might go farm them eventually they are a fun piece of armor and like actually enjoyable to use so i might just go in and like new moth keepers eventually but as of right now i'm just waiting for world drops to come around because i don't really feel like spending my time there the other method is by spending ascendant shards at raul at the tower this is a very expensive method and also takes a lot of time because you need to put time into grandmaster nightfalls and stuff to be able to focus this armor i would just wait for world drops personally that's what i do and i just use what i get i don't have the greatest exotic armor but i just also don't want to spend endless hours getting exotic armor I hope they like decrease the price I roll eventually. If 
you want to do anything for exotic armor, I would recommend just going and getting the exotic pinnacle or powerful reward from like playlist activities at least once a week. I think only one of them dropped now. It could still be three. I'm not positive. I don't do these too often, but or pay attention to them at the very least. But I know this one will give you an exotic Ingram and you can turn it into Raul or just spam open it. I just get all mine from playing the game. If you want to farm, those are the two methods to do it. And yeah, good luck. So this last part of the video, I'm just going to take you over to a third party website I use to create all my builds and like have a generator for all the stats I use. It is a very, very helpful website. I'll have the link down in the description. It's called D2 Armor Picker. If you just want to search it up yourself. You will be required to log in originally when you get to the site. I, it is a trusted site. I've been logged in for two years and I haven't noticed any problems. I know a lot of streamers and friends that do use this as well, so I would trust it. For, uh, once you log in, the first thing you're going to be greeted with is this screen. What you want to do is select the character you want to make a build for. So let's say I want to make my hunter build and then scroll down to the exotic section. You want to pick the exotic for the build you want to make. So let's say I want to make a graviton forfeit build. So I'm going to click on this and it'll so show the generation or like the combination of builds that we can use here. This will be a little bit overwhelming right here. So don't worry about this till we get to the end because there are 8,000 combinations we can choose from. So we want to narrow that down a lot more. We want to scroll down a little bit more till we get to the stat boost selection. This area is very important because you put on different fragments for your builds that will both positively and negatively impact your uh, stats. And it is very important that you have those correct so the generator can correctly do stats for you. So we want to click on void since we're making an invis build with graviton forfeit. And we want to click on the fragments we are using. I would recommend going in game and selecting your fragments first and then going in here because it can get a little overwhelming trying to read all these. So if we go to Destiny and we go over to our Void subclass, we can see we already have fragments picked out and that are they are all negatively impacting my stats. So if we hover over it, we can see exactly what they are negatively impacting. We are losing 10 recovery, 20 discipline, and 10 intellect. So if we go back to the D2 armor picker, we can choose 10 recovery gone, 20 discipline, and 10 intellect gone. And from there, it will like generate extra builds and make it so we can like not go to the, as high as we can because we have so many negatives. It, it's just making it so we can have the correct stats in game as represented on the website. It won't give you anything impossible. It will only give you stuff that you can do with your build and your current gear in your vault or on your character. So feel free just to like click, click on whatever ones you want. Just make sure they're correct. Last thing you want to do in this area is scroll down a bit more to the advanced settings area and you want to look at the masterwork area. This area is very important because if you do not have the currencies to masterwork your exotic, you want to make sure this all exotic items are masterworked is unchecked because if it is checkmarked, it will basically give you stats for if you can masterwork the armor, regardless if it is already masterworked or not. It'll want you to masterwork it to get to the stats you want. So you need to make sure this is unchecked if you cannot masterwork that exotic piece of armor. On the contrary, you also want to get rid of the legendary items as well if you do not have all your legendary items masterwork. I have enough to get all my legendary items masterwork, but I do not want to masterwork my exotic, so I'm going to leave it like this. My class items are already masterwork, so that's fine. I'm going to scroll all the way back up, and it is still at 8,000. We haven't narrowed it down that much, even at all. I don't even think we've narrowed it down at all, but this is where it gets like really important. You want to look at the stat selection over here. You want to pick the stats that you want to represent your build the most. So if I want to, if I'm using Graviton Forfeit for a survivability invis build, I'm going to want damage resist. So resilience, I'm going to max this out. I apologize for my cat. Anyways, I'm going to max this out and that will give me a 30% damage reduction and it'll also lower down the combinations generated as a whole. This is very helpful because you want to narrow it down and we can see that we can no longer get 100 mobility or recovery when we have 100 resilience. We want to pick another stat, which I'm going to pick Discipline so I can throw more nades. And that is our second 100 stat. And as you can see, that lowered our combinations down to 500. That's still a little too high for my liking, so I'm going to pick another stat. But as you can see, all these grayed out values you can no longer select because it is impossible to get two 100s in both these columns and then get like 100 intellect as well, with my current gear at least. So I'm going to pick 80 mobility because it's an invis build. I want to invis more often. And it lowered down the combinations to five. This is where it gets a little bit interesting because what you want to do is uh, while you have five choices here, you want to make sure your tiers are at the highest possible. So if you click on tiers, you want to make sure there's a down arrow. Typically, you only have to click it twice and it should have a down arrow and it'll sort by the highest tiers to the bottom tiers. 
it's looking like all these are the pretty much the exact same 30 strength and uh, 10 intellect and all that stuff so we want to click on one of these one of these two and uh, I'm gonna pick the one with the cheapest mods so it looks like these have the cheapest mods right here with two dis or one discipline and one mobility so I'm gonna click on this and it'll show you the stat outline for everything so these are all the armor pieces it's using all the stats it has and then all the mods that we're using and then all the artifice like mods we're using as well if you do not have artifice armor it will not show like it will not show anything in this section just like in the iron mods it will not show anything so yeah, I wouldn't worry about it if it shows nothing. These major mods are required to be in the armor to have the stats we want. So we want to click on copy dim, and then we want to go over to our dim link. Once we go to dim, we want to go to the search bar and copy paste it in there with control V or whatever you use. If you scroll down to your armor, you can now see that this armor is highlighted and it is the armor it wants us to use to get the stats we would like. So you can see all of it down here. It uh, you just grab the armor, you drag it on, it'll equip the armor, and then if you go in game, it is now on, and you can put the stats on. So now that it wants, if we go back to D2 armor picker, it wants three uh, resilience. You're going to put three resilience on and stuff like that. I hope that website's helpful. I hope I didn't explain it too fast or too, like, I, I didn't script this out, so it, it kind of was a little rushed. And if you have any questions, just I, uh, ask them down in the comments. I will answer them to the best of my abilities and help you out as best as I can. But that is gonna be it for the video. I hope you guys learned something or enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, I would appreciate it. And yeah, have a good day guys. See you guys next time.